I don't know how many of us were here for workers meeting. I would have just said, let's pray and just go home. God bless you, my brother. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are just here to encourage ourselves. You know, we have been fasting. We have been praying. And we believe God as he has heard us and he has answered us. And we will testify in Jesus' name. So this morning, we are going to read Isaiah 60. I'm going to read two versions, KJV and Amplify. Isaiah 60, and I read from verses 1 to 5. Say, for your light, you say, arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up, lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Praise the Lord. And I read the Amplified Version. It says, arise from your spiritual depression to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory and brilliance will be seen in, on you. Which means that people might be losing their job. Even the big high tech can be laying people off. People can be foreclosing. People can be struggling. But God says, that's not going to be part of your own story. It says, nations will come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. He says, lift up your eyes around you and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar away. And your daughters will look after, or after at their side. Then you will see and be radiant. And your heart will tremble with joy and rejoice. Because the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you. The earth of the nations will come to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. I don't know if we believe that. The wealth of the nations will come to you. It does not matter how terrible and how challenging it might be outside. God is telling you and I that the wealth of the nations will come to us. And do we think this thing will just fall on our laps like that? No. No, it's not possible. I mean, we see the short video clip that we look at. And deliberately, we know that this February is what? Black History Month. Some people, they are against it, but I look at it and I take from it. Many blacks are being celebrated. A lot of them. A lot. And that is one thing I want us to key into this morning. We are not here just like any other person. We are in this land to impact it. We are in this land to possess it. We are in this land to grab from it. 
Brethren, we can only say amen and amen if we rise up and do something. A brother at the workers' meeting was telling us about commitment. You cannot say you are committed and be doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. It's not done. So our topic is arise, shine. It's not arise and shine. Arise, shine. Because if you don't rise up, you cannot shine. We cannot sit down and fold our hands and think that things will happen. Many of us, we have been fasting. By the grace of God, the fasting will be ending maybe Wednesday. So what happened? Then we wait till the next time they call 50 days or 100 days. We have prayed. It's not, God, it's not that God doesn't hear or he's not listening. He has heard. But he's waiting for us to do something. If you are telling God to bless you, what is in your hand that you want God to bless? If I want God to bless me, what is in my hand that I brought to the presence of the Lord to bless? If we say we want to rise and shine, what are we going to do? We need to put action to everything that we are doing. Yesterday, we prayed about fear and worry. These are things that has limited some of us. Fear of unknown. Fear of what if I try it and I fail? Fear of, oh, it's not done like that. Oh, fear of, oh, my skin color. Oh, fear of my accent. Brethren, we saw that lady. Did she face challenges? Yes, of course. A lot. A lot. She said even at times when she was, I mean, at the parliament, going into the classroom, she will be stopped. That, oh, it seems that you've missed your class. Are you sure this is the class you are supposed to go to? Even there was even one occasion she wanted to enter the exam or to go and write exam. She was stopped to identify herself. At the end of the day, she was late for that exam. I mean, those are things that can easily make somebody to say, you know what, I'm done. Let me take another route. But it is not over until it is over. I pray that God will help us all in Jesus' name. I want us to look inward at ourselves. I remember at the last quarter prayer retreat that we had in December. We talk about lift up your heads, O ye gates. And we said that even for ourselves, we need to lift up ourselves. Because if you keep on looking down, you will fall. You will not be able to see what is in front. And we mentioned that we are at that prayer retreat, that last quarter, that before we know it, the first quarter of the coming year is going to be around us. But beloved, we are going to the last month of the first quarter of the year. How time flies. Before we know it, we are going to say Happy New Year again. I pray that God will help you and I in the name of Jesus. We are talking about arise. We are saying shine. Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When we look at that book of Isaiah very well, he has done uh, the, verse, uh, the chapter 58, talk about the kind of fasting that God ordained, which I believe we have done. And the 59 talks about the depression that was around them. And the prophet of God was encouraging the people to arise. Don't look at those depression. Don't be depressed. Arise from your depression. So right now, we might be looking at circumstances around us and be feeling like, oh, can I still do it? Can I still make it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If only you are determined. Brethren, this is a land that is filled with opportunities. But it depends on what you want to take out of it. What do you want to take out of it? 
You know, funny enough, as I was preparing this message and I watched that lady's video, a friend of mine called me yesterday from the U.S. She's a director in one of the institutions, HR director. She said that each time that people comes, uh, come into their office, instead of coming to her directly because she's of color, they will go to the white. And she has been having issues. I mean, real challenges. The things are really getting to her. That was why she sent me a message yesterday that please pray for me, pray with me, let's talk. Challenges in different ways that even people that she thinks will be on her side, they were against her. But she did not allow this to deter her. She did not allow this to stop her. I remember talking to her and I was saying that, oh, maybe you should start looking for another job. She said, no. That she's going to stay put there. That she has two years to finish her PhD. That after her PhD, she's just going to lecture, lecture for three years and then she will retire. She's just a young lady about my age. Why? She has a goal. She has a vision. She has a determination. Do you have a goal? Do you have a vision? Do you have a determination? Our brother was talking about commitment. You can have vision. If you are not committed to that vision, it will not work. You can have a goal. If you are not committed to that goal, it cannot work. What are your goals for the year 2023? Did you break it down to achievable goals? Or you just generalize it? What is it that you want to achieve in the next one year, two years, three years, four years, five years? Brethren, if we don't have it like that, it will be difficult for God to do what he wants to do in our life. So, brethren, you need to rise up from whatever it is that you are doing right now and begin to set your goals right. Begin to set your priorities right. It's not going to come easy. No. It's going to involve commitment. I mean, it's because we are committed. That's why we are here this morning. We could have to well be on our bed with our blanket covered and enjoying the cold. But we, have, we decided to come. That's a commitment. The same commitment you need to put to your goal. The same commitment you need to put to your vision. The same commitment you need to put that thing that you've written down. Brethren, if you don't write it down, it will be difficult for you to run with it. The Bible knows what he's saying when he says, write the vision down. Write it down. Because it is what is written down you will be able to see and run with. You imagine it on your head, it can just, you can just forget about it. But write it down. I pray that God will help you, God will help me in Jesus' name. Brethren, God is encouraging us this morning to rise up. Arise. We have tarried too long on this mountain. We cannot be singing the same song over and over again. We cannot be asking for the same thing over and over again. We need to do something new. Why do I need to arise? Why? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thought I have towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and an expected end. The thought of God towards you is not that you should just come to Canada and just be among the crowd. No. You can be that person that they will be putting on the news all over Canada. You can be. Or if you are thinking you cannot, what about your children? God's thought towards you and I is to be head and not tail. It says in Genesis 1.28, Genesis 1.28, 20, 
And he says, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over, dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. That is what God wants for us. Dominate. Possess it. Dominate it. Possess it. Have it. Deuteronomy 28, 13 says, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. Brethren, we can keep on confessing and confessing and claiming and claiming. If we don't put action to it, it won't work. It won't work. You know, he's a man of God. He happens to be a doctor, a medical doctor as well. So he said when he was telling you, talking to his congregation, he said, when you see me, I'm driving a beautiful car, and you are saying you claim it. You don't need to claim it. Are you ready to do what I do? He said, when you are sleeping, 5 a.m., I'm already at work, attending to patient. At night, I'm reading. And you are seeing me driving. I say, ah, pastor, I claim that. It's not going to work. It won't work. You need to work. You need to put action to it. You need to do it. I pray that God will help you and I in Jesus' name. You know, like I mentioned about the lady that we watched the video clip. Things didn't come easy for her. But she... She persevered. She persevered. She, she put in all her best. Brethren, please, this year, I'm begging us in the name of God. Don't let it be like other years. Let's set out to make remarkable achievements. Let's set out to achieve something concrete. My said that I'm standing in front of you don't think that I'm just talking the talk. We are all in the boat together. You know, I wrote a test about a few weeks ago, and I failed. I won't be coming here all the time that I pass. I will tell you the ones that I failed too. I failed it, but at the same time, I started preparing myself to write it again. You are not a failure if you don't try. I mean, if you refuse to try. That is when you are a failure. But if you fail and you look at it and you shake yourself and move again, you've learned something. And you know that you are not going to repeat that thing that you've learned. So brethren, let's wake up. We have prayed. We have fasted. God, ha he had us. He's just waiting for us to do it. And he will back us up. Brethren, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. It begins with a step. You need to seek knowledge. Seek it. Ontario, just to discover. There are so many things that you still need to discover in this Ontario. The prodigal son in Luke 15, 18, he says, I will arise and go to my father. If he sat down there with the pigs and was eating with the pigs and kept on saying, oh, how I wish I can go back to my father. How I wish I can go back to my father. Will the father restate him? No. He said, I will arise and I'll go to my father. And the father raised. So we need to rise up. The same thing. When we look at um, Genesis 21, 19, the same thing with Haggai. When she ran out of water and everything, what did she do? She, ran, she, she stood up from where she was when the angel told her to look at the well. That child would have died. The same thing with the four lepers at the gate of Samaria. If they did not rise up and go, all of them would have died in hunger. The same thing with Peter in Luke 5.5. 5. He said he had toyed all night. 
But at thy word, I will cast the net. At thy word. And he did. And the Lord helped him. So, brethren, don't let us relent on doing what is needful. Because God is always a faithful God. You know, Micah 7, it says, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. I may fail that test, but I'm not going to dwell on that test. I'm going to write it again, and I'm going to pass. He says, if you faint in the day of adversary, your strength is small. So, brethren, what is it that God has told you concerning 2023? Or what is it that you have taken to the presence of the Lord concerning 2023? Like I mentioned earlier on, Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. Habakkuk 2 to 3. It says, write the vision and make it plain on the tablet that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. It will not tarry. It says it's for an appointed time. Brethren, there are some things that you can do at a particular time. There are some things you cannot do at some particular time. So we need to be alert in the spirit to the timing and season of life. We need to be alive to the timing and seasons of life. Are you conscious of the time that you are in right now? Are you conscious of the season that you are in right now? Or you are just coasting along? You know, some people's ambition is just to get to Canada. After that, what? Nothing. Daddy Canada. Mommy Canada. Auntie Canada. So what happened? You know, I always tell people that people in Nigeria, they are not sleeping. They are not folding their hands. Like somebody mentioned it during the course of the service. That they are paying school fees, naira, converting it to dollar. Do you think it's easy? No. So they are doing something extra to achieve that. What is it that you and I are doing? May God help you. May God help me in Jesus' name. I just want us to look at two people that fasted in the Bible. Just two people, but I will concentrate on one. Esther and Nehemiah. Good enough, their, bo their books follow each other. Esther saw a need. Haman was about to destroy her people. What did she do? She fasted. She prayed. Did she not fold her hands and sat? No. She did something. So also Nehemiah. Nehemiah saw a need. That the walls of Jericho are down. What did he do? He fasted. He prayed. And did what? Took action. He took action. Brethren, never live a life of wishful thinking. I wish. Stop wishing anymore. Nothing happens suddenly, brethren. Success doesn't happen by accident. Our brother mentioned it during Sunday school. It doesn't. It involves planning and preparation. Nehemiah prepared. After fasting and prayer, he prepared. He took action. He went at night, round about the city when people were sleeping. You have children that you are not seeing. Praise the Lord. You can use that night to study if you need to study for exam. God never gives vision without provision. Whatever vision that God has given you and I, there's always a provision for it. Nehemiah was prayerful. Brethren, go back to the place of prayer. Peradventure, you don't even have any vision right now. 
Good enough. It's just two months down the year. You still have 10 more. You can have one now. You can write goals now. It's, in, it's not too late. Nehemiah was prayerful. When we look at Nehemiah 1 4, we see him praying all the time. Nehemiah 1 5 to 11, Nehemiah 2 1 to 4, and all the rest because of time. As you are praying, as you are fasting, you are putting action into whatever you need to do. I don't want us to be like just any color people of the land. Let's be outstanding. Let's stand out in whatever field that we find ourselves. I pray that God will help you and I in Jesus' name. Because Nehemiah prayed, God gave him an opening, a window. It was a cup bearer, right? He went to the presence of the king. Is it today he has been going to the presence of the king? But God made the king notice something. Your container, there's something wrong. And the king asked him, what is wrong? He told the king about what is going on. And the king decided to help him. Brethren, as you are praying, reach out. As you are fasting, reach out. There are people that can help you to channel that path. There are people that can enable you to channel that path. Don't just relent on your own strength alone. And don't settle for less. In everything that you do, brethren, do not settle for less. And do not close your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. If you need to seek knowledge, don't assume that you know everything. You know, Nehemiah could have told the king that, oh, I'm fine, all is well. Like we always say, it is well. Even if it's not well, it is well. Even in the well, it is well. But he told the king what the situation was. And the king was able to help him. Brethren, please, let's open our mouth and, talk, and speak and not limit ourselves. Brethren, for us to be able to rise and shine, we need to be selfless. We need to be selfless. Selfless, committed, dedicated, and things like that. We need to be selfless. Don't let us sit in our comfort zone and think everything will work well. You know, like of recent, Daddy Joe has been talking about um, goals and things like that. You know, yesterday, the open heavens of yesterday tells us about what God wants us to do that God wants us to prosper. You know, he said that you can be the richest person in the world and go to hell. And at the same time, you can be the richest and go to heaven. The choice is yours. So it's not only in the spiritual thing that we need to be proactive, even in a secular, like we had at the Sunday school. Nehemiah could have sat down. I'm good. I'm a cup bearer. I'm doing well. No. He left his comfort zone. Brethren, rise up from your comfort zone. It is whatever you sow that you will reap. Whatever you sow in the spiritual, whatever you sow in this physical, it is what you will reap. You need to seek to balance both life, both the spiritual and the physical. Another thing that I need us to look at in Nehemiah is, is what another, it was focus. He avoided distraction. There are so many things that will happen to distract us, like we had in this uh, workers' meeting. There will be so many distractions. People will talk down your vision. Sometimes when you share the vision with people, they will talk it down, they will water it down. But are you going to? relent and say oh because you said it is not working then i'll leave it like that no it ought not to be 
Many are times when I talk to people, I always tell them, what, is it? what next do you want to do? Many people that know me, when you are telling me that you have done this, I say, oh, that is good. So what next are we now doing? Brethren, please, let us re or rethink very well. This land is for us to possess it. And celebrating Black History Month is not in vain. There's something about it. I don't know me. I always take it there's something. Who says I will not be the next person? I can't be the next person to be celebrated. Who says you can't be the next person to be celebrated in whatever field? Daniel proposed to be focused. I mean, sorry, Nehemiah. Same thing, Daniel. When Daniel was in the land, he refused to compromise with the, uh, to eat the king's meat. He separated himself. Maybe there's some comfort that you need to deny yourself of. There's some comfort that you need to get away with. Even when Nehemiah were building, you know, Tobias and Sambalat and all of them, they look at the world. They say, even if a fox should cross over this wall, it will break. Come on. Even the houses here that are plywood, that paper, they are papers. Can fox cross over and, and this thing will fall? No. People are ready to talk down your vision, but it's you that you know what God has told you. So it's you that you need to run with it. It's not that person. Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Whatsoever he does. Whatsoever he does. It's not going to be an open hand. You cannot sit down and be on social media from morning to night and think you are you're going to prosper. Unless you are using it for commercial gain. It says, whatsoever he does shall prosper. What is it that you are doing this year, 2023? What is it that I am doing in this year, 2023? What is in my hand? I pray that God will help you and I in Jesus' name. Nehemiah kept the vision to himself. Not everything that you need to tell people about is, the, is these days of social media that you will see people pregnant and they will be flogging it everywhere. This is the generation that we are in now. Brethren, there's some vision that you need to keep to yourself. And there's some vision that you need to share with people of like passion. People that you think, we, we, you know that will propel you to achieve it. Not the people that will talk it down. When we look at the, this lady, the daughters of Zelophehad, Normally, they are not supposed to have anything. There's no portion given to ladies. But what happened? They took their case to Moses. So take your case to people that you know. Take your vision to people that you know will buy into it. They took it to him. And what happened? Moses took it to God. And God said, yes, give their, their location. Some people, you tell them, they say, oh, it can never be possible. Are they God? No. Keep your vision to yourself. Nehemiah 11. So I came to Jerusalem and, there, and was there three days. Then I arose in the night. I and a few men with me. I told no one what God has put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I wrote on. He refused to share it with people that will not buy into it. Keep the vision to yourself and walk with it. Keep the vision to yourself and run with it. Work with people with like passion. 
what which encourage us that we encourage you. Avoid people like Sambalat and Tobias. Avoid people that will talk down whatever it is that God has told you. And then you need to strategize. You need to plan. What do I need to do next? Okay, this is my goal for, this, for the first cut out this year. Was I able to achieve it? Why was I not able to achieve it? What do I need to do next time I get to that situation? Planning. Don't, don't let us live, live for chance. We need to plan. Brethren, we need to be alert in the spirit. Because some people will talk some things, we tell you some things, that if you are not alert in the spirit, you will just take it as, no, as any other thing. Many are, right now, there are so many, many pastors on the social media. Like our brother said this morning, there are some people that call themselves. There are some people that God called. A lot of them. So if you don't know God for yourself, people will tell you things that are not in line with the things of God. And you will just take it like that. So you need to know God for yourself. What is God telling you right now? You need to be alert in the spirit. Because when these people came to Nehemiah, when we look at Nehemiah 6.10, afterward I came to... Yes, afterward he came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehitabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple. So they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all. But that he had pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobias and Sambalat had hired him. If he was not in the spirit, he would have gone. And they would have killed him. And that project would have been aborted. Be alert in the spirit. So it was when Nehemiah did rise up that he shine because he became governor if he had stayed as a cup bearer he would have died a cup bearer but after the walls were built and everything he became governor they made him governor when we look at nehemiah 5 14 nehemiah 5 14 he says i would like to mention that for the entire 12 years that I was governor of Judah from the 20th until the 32nd year of the reign of King Azazel. I don't know. My aides and I accepted no salary or other assistance from the people of Israel. If Nehemiah had remained in Shushan, he would have died a cup bearer. So if you sit down in that position and you think that thing will not be possible, you will remain in that position. And others will come by they will overtake and they will do the same thing. I pray that God will help you and I in Jesus' name. Brethren, most importantly, we need to rise spiritually. Spiritually, you cannot be on the same level that you were at the beginning of the year and still be on the same place. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you allow the word of God to dwell in you richly? Can people see Christ in you? As you are shining your secular job, like we had during Sunday school, you need to shine also in the spiritual. How is your relationship with God? Is God in your career? Is God in your business? Never leave out the God factor in everything that you are doing. 
Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. When you seek God first, in the place of seeking him, he will give you vision. We heard our pastor talking about it, that there's some things that he solved. That these are information that he got in the spiritual. We cannot be doing drive through Christian and think we are going to receive from the Lord. It's not possible. Spiritually, let us wake up. Each time that we come here and we say that the, 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 we, uh, we listen to testimony at the Holy Ghost service, workers were raising the dead, I look at myself. Am I not a worker in the same ministry? How many dead have I risen? How many sick people have I prayed for? Are they not enjoying the grace that is on, that is on the ministry as I'm enjoying it? Spiritually, brethren, let us wake up. Let us rise up spiritually and possess our place in the spirit. Then the enemy will not be able to toss us up and down. Mark 16 says, and these signs will follow those who believe. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. Brethren, how many demons you and I have casted out this year? Or are they here rolling along with us, coasting along with us? He said, they will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpent and they will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them. He said, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. How many sick people have I laid my hands on? How many sick people have you laid your hands on? Brethren, before we know it, we will be here at the first quarter prayer retreat. What is going to be your testimony? What is going to be my testimony? Arise. Take action. Do the needful. And the Lord will back you up. Shall we please rise up? I put my hands in your hand. Oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I shall not fail, for Jesus never fail. I put my hands. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, oh Lord. I put my hands. I put my hands in your hands. Brethren, success does not come by accident. It comes with diligence. It comes with commitment. It comes with determination. Why don't you begin to talk to the Almighty God this morning? I don't know that area that you have been trusting God for. Is it in your secular life? Is it in your spiritual life? That you are that you are thinking that you cannot achieve those things that you are looking at those things as impossible why don't you begin to talk to the almighty God this morning that God will give you the strength because he said he has not given you the spirit of fear he has given you the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind the Lord has given you that power to do exploit, to succeed, to possess it. If you need to burn the midnight candle, pray for the grace to burn the midnight candle. If you need to seek knowledge, pray for the grace to seek the right knowledge. He says, in all thy getting, get wisdom, get understanding. 
need for the understanding of the time and season that we are in. We need the understanding to know the time of life that you are in. Those things that you have written down, why don't you talk to the Almighty God for the grace to be able to achieve them? Of your strength, you cannot do it. There will be disappointment. There will be distraction. Even your strength will fail you. Talk to the Almighty God this morning. That you don't want to end this first quarter of this year the same way. You want to be able to say that of indeed I've been able to achieve this. Peradventure, you don't even have a goal or vision. Begin to write them down. And ask for the grace to be able to achieve them. Ask for the wisdom. Ask for the knowledge. Ask for the understanding. Pray that God will quicken your mortal body. Pray that God will remove every form of distraction. Pray that God will give you favor everywhere you go. Luke 2.52. Luke 2.52 says, Jesus increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and men. Pray that God will grant you favor before God and man. Concerning those goals, concerning those visions, that you will not relent. In the name of Jesus. Spiritually, pray that God will quicken you. Pray that God will sharpen your spiritual antenna, that more of God that you want to be seen to the invisible. You want to be here the inaudible. You want to lay hands on the sick to recover. You want to raise the dead. It starts from somewhere. That he just said it started from his house. That when his children, when they come to him, that they have a headache. He said he will lay hands on them. And he will put the Tylenol by the side. Brethren, we can start from our home. Laying hands on the sick in our home. Pray that God will cause these signs to follow you. In the name of Jesus. Pray that in this land you will be celebrated. You will not just be a number. Pray that everything that you need to do to achieve it, that God will give unto you. 